Welcome to part 2 of this series, the Roman Empire and the Holy Land. In the previous video, we were speaking about the, the Assyrian refugees coming into this region of West Africa, according to the scholar. But we asked the question, is it not possible that the Assyrians were always on the continent? And that's what I'd like to speak about first, because, you know, we're not saying that for, we're not saying that based on nothing. I'd like to show you something that researchers have come across. And if we go to the Book of Jubilees, speak, speaking about how how the land was divided amongst the three sons of Noah and the grandchildren, and speaking about Ashur, it says, And for Ashur came forth the second portion, all the land of Ashur and Nineveh and Shinar and to the border of India. So we see how it says that the, that the land of Shinar fell for the lot of Ashur, now if we go to this 1710 map of Africa, some researchers have noticed that in this region of Nubia, ancient Nubia, and what we know today as Sudan, we have a region called Senar, and lower down here we have Senar or Susa. Now if we go to the, the page on the biblical land of Shinar, we can see that I've highlighted this word here, this variation, Senar. You can see it's very similar to, to this word, um, Senar. So could this, be, could this be the biblical land of Shinar? So what I've done is I've put this on our map just to see. So I've got Senar or Susa. So this is why I've got this arrow pointing here for Assyria with the question mark, because if this really could be the, the land of Shinar and the way the Book of Jubilees describes the land of Shinar being in the, the territory of Ashur, then maybe we can say and try find evidence to support the idea that the Assyrians were always on the continent, that they were you know, perhaps in this region of East Africa, and as the empire was collapsing, you know, then they, they started to move further west, like that scholar was finding evidence for. So I just wanted to start with that, and also notice how in the Book of Jubilees it says after mentioning Shinar, and it says to the border of India. So that can work with what we've got on our picture because of what we were speaking about in the previous video. So if this could be the land of Shinar, we can see how it could reach to the to the border of India. But the border of India we're speaking about is the the other son of Shem, Elam. Because we're asking, could this be the land of Elam in this region? So I was thinking that you know, some viewers, they might they might ask the question, how can we look for Elam in this region if we know this as Ethiopia? So what we'll do now is try address that because I came across this work. It's called The Kushite Origins of Sumer and Elam. Now Sumer, the Sumerian civilization, they, um, they refer to themselves as the, the black-headed people and some scholars connect this word Sumer with the biblical land of China. So that's something to think about because if, we, if we're asking the question, could this be the land of China, then we're also asking, could this really be the land of Sumer? And we'll speak more about that in this video. But notice how it also speaks about Elam. So the Kushite origins of Elam, that's what we're going to speak about. We're going to go to mighty Elam. Give me a second to find it. Okay, mighty Elam. This part here could be important. It says, the city of Susa, or Kisia. So the city of Susa was also known as Kisia. And we were saying in the previous video how Susa, you know, is going to be important for Elam. And we notice here how it says, Senar, or Susa, near where we're looking for Elam. Now, I'm not saying that this Susa here is the you know the capital city of Elam? You know I, I can't say that because I don't know, but um, you know this word Susa here might just be speaking about a about a region, but we can't you know ignore this uh, the Susa here when we we know that Susa is important for for Elam and also later for other empires, you know an important city for for the Medes as well. But I want to read one more thing from this page because it also speaks about the the land of Elam. 
it says here about the word Elam that it says sometimes it is called Kisia, sometimes Elam or Elamaeus. So even the land of Elam sometimes referred to as Kisia. And then it goes on to speak about these variations where you've got the Kisians or the Kosaians or the Kushites. So this got of the opinion that these different terms like Kisians, Kosaians, you know, also speaking about the Kushites. So we can say this word Kisia is a form of Kush. So Elam, you could say also sometimes called Kush. So if we just go back to put that together, now, just to show that you know, we might not be wrong for looking for Elam in this region because you know, if Elam was also known as, let's say, Cush, and we know in the Bible that the land of Cush was also called Ethiopia, that word Ethiopia used interchangeably with, with Cush, you can see how, um, you know, to the Greeks and to the Romans, that you know, even this land of Elam could take on that name Ethiopia. So I just wanted to show you, I wanted to show you that so that we... Um, just to support the idea that we're not, you know, wrong for looking for Elam in this region, even though we know that this, we know this region is Ethiopia today. Now I'd like to speak a bit more about Sumer, because we introduced Sumer as being another form of the, of that word, the um, the biblical land of Shinar. And I came across this uh, this city in Sumer, ancient Sumer, called Kish. Now we're told that. The Sumerian civilization was in the country we know as Iraq, so they call this like a cradle of civilization in um, in Iraq. And you see here they got Kish, but you know you can't help but notice the similarity of this word Kish with the biblical Kush. And we've already seen these different variations: how we have the Kissians and the Kos the Kosaians for the Kushites. So could this word Kish, you know, really be connected with the biblical Kush? So let's read this part. The Sumerian king list states that Kish was the first city to have kings following the deluge, beginning with Gushur. Okay, so we're going to keep that in mind that the first place the first place to have kingship following the deluge was Kish. Now we're going to go to the page on Kush. And it says here about this explorer James Bruce in 1770, you know, visiting the Ethiopian highlands and coming across this tradition. A tradition among the Abyssinians, which they say they have had since time immemorial, that in the days after the deluge, Cush, the son of Ham, travelled with his family up the Nile until they reached the Atbara plain. So isn't it interesting, that according to this tradition, that Cush and his family are coming after the deluge to Ethiopia. So not to the region of the country we know as Iraq, and they're building the city Aksum, so let's look on the map. Okay, so here's Aksum in this region of Abyssinia. So, you know, if this tradition is true, that after the deluge or the flood, Cush and his family are coming along the Nile into this region of Abyssinia and building Aksum, that this is the starting point for for Cush. And we think about this uh, tr this uh, king list, how it says that, you know, Kish was the first place to have kings following the deluge, the deluge, but it's not speaking about Cush. Then we can see the implications because we know that Nimrod is in the family of Cush. So if Cush and his family are coming into this region of Abyssinia or you know, what we know as Ethiopia, that also brings Nimrod into this region. And then would Nimrod, would Nimrod not be starting here with his kingdom and building his cities in this region? And then that can support this, uh, this scenario being connected with the land of Shinar of the Bible, because then we can, you know, we've got information to support the idea for Nimrod being here, and you know this could be the the site for the Tower of Babel. So just important because, you know, we we're asking that question: could the could the Senar or Susa be the biblical land of Shinar? But then you'd also be at the same time connecting this area with Sumer. So then you would need Nimrod to be in that region for it to make sense. And you know, with that information, even though you know it is a tradition, but does it not look? Does this not ring more true that this would be a you know the starting point for Nimrod if he's the son of Cush? So that could be um, quite important because 
what we're doing is we're trying to understand this region to you know, just get the best understanding that we can and then we're going to try and move towards the towards the Roman Empire so that's what we're trying to do is understand this region and then move towards uh, towards Rome so I'd just like to finish also speaking a bit more about Elam so that we understand Elam the importance because we also spoke about the Persian Gulf with a question mark here if we go to the book of Josephus it says for Elam left behind him the Elamites the, ancestor, the ancestors of the Persians so according to Josephus the Persians come from Elam so that's quite important as well because you know if we're looking for Elam in this region and you know Josephus is saying the Persians come out of Elam you know that m might also show that we we might not be wrong for you know looking for the Persian Gulf in this region as well if the Persians come come out of Elam so that's something we're going to continue to investigate this connection with with Persia in this region and how that could also um, be important for for the Roman Empire so I hope you found this video interesting we um, we're starting to get a better understanding of this picture and how it could work and now we're going to start to move this way towards the north so we can uh, start to speak a bit more about the about the Roman Empire which is the idea of the series so thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one